what's up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button i hope you like this video this is going to be your review of love and hip-hop atlanta season nine episode two so we start this episode off with, with we left off last week at the funeral home with Carly. She didn't call all her friends and told her to meet her down to the Froom home, and nobody know why they there. They get there, and Carly is saying that she has a, a secret to tell them, and Spice is there. Spice is like, tell them, Carly. That's my that's my Jamaican accent. And come to find out, Carly has been married for a year to Arkansas, Memphis. Cadillac Mo. I don't I don't know this man's name. I don't care to know his name. So don't hit me in the comments about not knowing his name because I don't care. Okay. Um she been married to him for a year. She said that because they were doing IVF, she didn't want to have a child out of wedlock. So they went to Vegas and got married. And now they're not together anymore. She said that he'd been cheating on her. Somebody, she said he had prostitutes in my bed. But then she came back later and said, well, this woman hit me up and told me he was cheating on me. I don't know how that proves that she's a prostitute. But maybe you had information you just didn't share with us. Whatever. Let me tell you how that conversation would have went down. I wish a mofo would call me to come to the Froom Holler parlor to bury their marriage if you don't grab a bottle of jack daniels and meet me at my living room like everybody else i said what and then she of course was telling everybody about how bad the relationship was and how you know she she stopped short of saying that he physically abused her but he let she lets you get the Impression that it was mental abuse and that things were so horrible and he did this and he did that and did da, 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 da. Um, Yeah, whatever Then we have young jog down to the trap museum with light-skinned Keisha She's a new character that sees her and her boo thing and um, um, she kind of is with them and he said, you know, he he said things are not going too well with him and Kendra right now. So he's focusing on, on business. And he said that, you know, Light Skin Keisha is one of the best independent artists that's out there right now coming out of the ATL. Um, she was doing, excuse me, she was doing visuals, I guess, for her new uh, video down to the um, Trap Museum. And they got to talking about a um jock had this real cute coat on real red coat long trench coat it was cute and she said look you know growing up it was a whole lot of girls named keisha so they started calling me the light-skinned one you know you know keisha the light-skinned one y'all know how that happens it always happens like that so she light-skinned keisha so she said how her and um scrappy had done a song together but how she not really sure what's up with the song because he posted and deleted it the same day and she hadn't really talked to him. She said that sometimes Scrappy be acting real funny, how sometimes he see her and it's all love and then other times he see her and it's like they don't know each other and of course she took it back to Bambi. And Jock was like, well, this is my cousin, so I'm feeling kind of awkward right now that, you know, um... That I'm not really, you know, I can't really say anything one way or the other. That's my cousin. But at the end of the day, you know, your experience is your experience. And he did try to, you know, defend him a little bit. Defend Bambi a little bit or whatever. Um, but what it seems like it boils down to. Because I'm not dragging this this out. Seems like it boils down to light-skinned Keisha messed with somebody that was a friend of Bambi's with her new boyfriend and they cheated. Light skinned Keisha was the other woman and was cheating with a friend of Bambi's while they were dating and so Scrap's thing is I'ma support my girl. That's my wifey. You know, I but then he was funny because he was like, Well, you know, I tend to let women's problems be women's problems, but I'ma support my wife. Well, if you're gonna let women's problems be women's problems but you're gonna support your wife, then you did like that's business. You did a song with this girl. Business is business. Like wifey need to understand a song don't last, I mean, especially in this day and age with whatever, you drop it, you let it play itself out, and then you move on. You don't have to do no spot dates with her. You don't have to perform the song with her. But hell, if you want to spend studio time, money, and energy, you might as well let that thing play. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. So, um, Sierra, look. Okay. 
Okay. So it's 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 court day. Sierra's on her way to court. They have this whole thing, you know, they got to be dramatic with it. They showing her, dropping her son off at school, and she's doing the voiceover. And I got court today, and I just can't believe I could be going away for a year. And I'm dropping my son off at school, and I'm emotional because I may, I may not be here to pick him up from school. And I might be gone for 12 long months. And she gets to the courthouse, and her mother's out there with her and her assistant and some other people. And of course, uh, the boyfriend's with, her, with, with, with her, what's his name, BK, he's with her. And then here come um, Shooter. I got his name right this week. Here comes Shooter walking around the corner. So at first I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Shooter, he did the right thing after all. He decided he was going to come and testify. Shooter talking about something. Oh, no, I'm just here to give you some more support. I ain't going in the courtroom. So you got your happy ass out of the bed, got dressed, came down to the courthouse, a place that you said you was never coming back to again. I mean, I know you said you was never stepping foot inside, but my thing is if you out front, you went through all that just to tell me you ain't going inside. Then BK going to dap him up to my some Yeah, man, I understand. I understand. You what? No, I don't understand. I don't understand that at all. That's ridiculous. So then Carly, they showing Carly in in the car trying to get there. Carly's caught in traffic. And she's like, well, are you sure you're going to the right courthouse? Which courthouse are you going to? Is this the right courthouse? Are we going to the right courthouse? And I'm thinking to myself, how many damn courthouses does Atlanta have? Like, I know here in D.C. we have the federal courthouse and we have the state courthouse. And I know that sometimes, like, I know one time I had jury duty, right? And all I saw was jury duty. I didn't pay attention to whether it was federal jury duty or if it was state jury, well, D.C. D you know, if it was the district jury duty. So I went to the district courthouse. And they were like, ma'am, you at the wrong place. You need to go. This is a federal jury duty. Now, good for me, it's in walking distance. I went boom, boom, bam, and I was at the right place. But I could get that. But, I mean, I y'all tell me in the comments, how many courthouses does Atlanta have that Carly said she kept going to the wrong one? Then traffic was bad. Then Carly got there and said, well, she told me courtroom D. I got the courtroom D and it was empty. Now, later on in the episode, when she's explaining to Rashida what happened, she said that she went to courtroom A. I mean, I mean went to courtroom 3. So, I don't know what... I, I don't know if she forgot her script or she really was at the wrong court. Like, I don't know. But then Sierra talking about something. Carly, um, somebody told me, I'm not going to say who it was, but that somebody told me that Carly really didn't want to testify anyway. So Carly not being here, Carly not showing up, that she was told not to get involved in my mess and her lawyer told her to stay out of it. Why, Sierra? Why? It seems interesting to me, Sierra, how don't nobody want to testify on your behalf, but you're so innocent. Like, again, I don't know whether you did something or you didn't do something to this pregnant woman down to the throne. But what I am going to say is your baby daddy slash ex-husband had an opportunity to clear your name. And he took the time out to come to the courthouse just to show you what he wasn't going to do. Because that's what that was. That was, I want you to know. I want it to be clear. I want you to understand that I am going out of my way to not help you. Then you have Carly Red, who you, by your own account, she got the golden ticket to clear you. And you saying that somebody then called you to tell you that she has no intention of clearing you. Why don't nobody like you, Sierra? Why don't nobody like you, Sierra? I mean, are you lying? Anyway, so... Carly don't never get there, okay? But her lawyer gets a continuance because she says that there's potential um, that she hasn't gotten all of the discovery and she hasn't had a chance to review all of the evidence against Sierra and that potentially there's a videotape that could clear her that if they got a copy of the videotape, then all of this could be over with. Now, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to be done with this whole situation. Well, no, no, I'm not. But I'm going to be done with this part of my situation. Um, you've been fighting this case for two years. Where, where this videotape been for two years? Like, we're not talking about a, 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 a major crime here where a, a, there's a conspiracy theory to keep... Like, where the tape been? It's been two years. Child, anyway. So, 
Carly didn't show up, but she got a continuance, and we'll get to that. So we have Jock and we have Scrappy. And I already told y'all part of this. They're going to go visit Mama D. Mama D is at home. She giving Ernest a hard time being who she is. She said, you know, me and Ernest have had a hard marriage, but he my ride or die. I love him. But you yelling at him about the fact that he don't know where the trash bags are, child. Child. Anyway. Um, Jock and, um, on the way over there, Jock asked Scrappy about the whole situation with Keisha. And I already told y'all about that. Then we talk about, we learn about Jock's ride share program. Y'all know it went viral a few months ago about him driving for Uber. He really wasn't driving for Uber. He was driving for his own ride share app that, you know, he launched. And he was like, look, Jock, Jock ain't scared of no money. Jock ain't scared to make no money. He ain't scared of the hustle. And for that, I respect you, Jock. Go for it. So they get over to the house. And once again, Scrappy is reminding Mama D that she can't drink. Mama D was like, um, first of all, I am laid up in the, uh, laid up. I can't even get up out the bed. I'm on bed rest. I can't go nowhere. I'm not drinking. And he was like, yeah, you're not drinking now, but I mean, you might, you know, you, you never know. You might get, a, um, get a little taste taste for it, you know, but you can't be drinking. So, okay, we're not going to drink. So then, they, he goes to talk to Ernest, and of course, him and Ernest are talking about, Scrap and Ernest are talking about the fact that his mom is an alcoholic, and she got to stay away from the alcohol. Okay, we get it. We get it. We get it. She's talking to Jock, and I thought, because look, she was telling um, Scrap, you know, Jock, close the door, let me talk to you. I thought she was going to get him to um, hand her a drink. Like, I thought she had some booze stashed somewhere under the pillow, uh, you know, under the mattress or something, but no, she was just letting Jock know that she's planning a um, surprise party, birthday party for Scrap, um, and that was that was pretty much it. She would say that she's sick of them fussing at her about not taking a drink, you know. All right. Um, Akbar and Alexis. So, they're going out. Akbar is saying, look, I'm really trying to stay away from the drama and stay out of the drama. Like, at this point in the game, I ain't really appreciate what Alexis did the other night. She told me that she wasn't going to start none. But my thing is, I feel like you walked in that door knowing full well what that woman was up to. But, whatever. Um... We get Alexis Sky's side of the story a little bit more to her side of the story. Basically, Arkansas, Memphis, Kodak, Mo was trying to get with her. She didn't want to be with him. She wasn't trying to get with him. Blah, 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 blah. Carly said um, that she was going to spit on her and her mama every time it was going to be on site. And I don't play with my mama like that. I don't play with my family like that. She know better. Arkansas owed my family some money. Um, blah, blah, blah. Blah blah blah. Akbar was like, "Well, I could definitely understand you feeling that way, but you know, when you you know you chose to handle it at a, at a time that wasn't appropriate." And she was like, "I know, I know. You keep telling me that. I know I was wrong for the time for when I chose to do it, but you know, I just I was just upset." And then she's talking about something. You know, when I get on that handy. Look, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people bad, blame their bad behavior on alcohol. Like, your bad behavior is your bad behavior. Own it. It is what it is. You did it. I've made some bad decisions while I was drinking. I'm not going to blame Jack Daniels for it. It ain't Jack's fault. It's my fault. A drunk man's words are a sober man's thoughts. That's my, I believe it. I will believe it till I die. So, you jumped on Carly because you wanted to jump on Carly. You would have done it sober. You would have done it drunk. You was ready for that moment. You were, you were ready. You was ready for that moment. Because you didn't hesitate. You walked in there and, and, and you kicked your shoes off. There was no hesitation. And that wasn't Henny. That was you. So, she said she wanted to talk to Carly. So, Carly agrees to talk to her, right? I'm not going to... Yeah. Carly agrees to talk to her. They meet up at the boxing gym. Carly said, you know, I just want her to let, I just want to let her know what she walking into. Because, you know, she can get that work. Anyway. Basically, what we find out is the reason why Carly said what she said and felt the way she felt about the situation is because her and Mo were coming out the mall one day and Maurice got robbed. She said one of the people that, that assaulted, them, well, that, they said, I guess they assaulted Maurice, put a gun to her head, robbed her of everything she had just bought from the store. She was like, we just got finished buying all this Fendi and all of this Gucci, and they just stole my bags. And I guess she's trying to say that it's Alec it was Alexis's family. And that's why she was like, next time I see you or whenever I see you, it's on site. And Alexis was like, well, I could definitely understand that. Like, I don't condone that. My family, you know, I don't condone my family doing that. That was wrong of them. I, you know, that I don't appreciate them doing that but you know um she's like but Carly you could do better like I mean you're an older woman and I was like oh shit 
why she could do that. She know Carly don't like nobody knowing she old. She gonna say, and you could just do better than that. Like, why would you even mess with him? And so then they went on to talk about Mo and how horrible of a person Mo is. And she was like, and I just want to let you know that me and Mo ain't never, we, we never did that. We never did nothing together. We never had sex. And Carly was like, in her confessional, Carly was like, yeah, all right then. Like, I know y'all did, but I'm gonna just let this, I'm not. If you don't want to claim them, I understand. If you like it, I love it. But I know you did something with my man. But I don't care no more because I don't want to be with him no more. So then we see Carly going to the divorce attorney. Rashida rides with her. And I mean, you know, it's the same old, same old. The divorce, you know, the attorney's like, well, tell me what happened. Tell me how you feel. You really want the divorce. Blah, 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 blah. Now, of course, when Carly is telling Rashida the story of what happened between her, Mo, and Alexis, she's not giving, explaining why Alexis is upset as she is. And Rashida was like, look, I've been friends with Carly long enough to know that it's always some more shit when it comes down to Carly. But at this point, she got so much other stuff going on, I'm not even going to stress it. It was what it was. It is what it is. All right, back over here to Sierra. Oh, and before I forget, let me say this. You know, I really appreciate VH1 giving us the stay in the house, you know, public service announcements. Like during Love and Hip Hop, Atlanta, Mimi gave the, the public service announcement, stay your ass in the house, you know. And then during Love and Hip Hop, Miami, Trick Daddy gave us that service announcement about staying in the house. But can I say that both of them were outside when they gave the announcement? Can we? What? Like, if you want to tell me to stay in the house, can you be in the house when at least you're telling me to stay in the house? Like... Mimi was outside, and I don't care. She might have been on her deck. She might have been on the balcony, but it don't matter. She was outside. Then Trick was in his car. Trick, you got lupus. You're the last person that need to be in your car. You need to be in the damn house under some Clorox wipes, okay? So I just had to say that before I forgot. Before, yeah, because I was going to forget. So sierra is having a a, a a gemstones and baubles party something she said that her jeweler has opened up the doors and she's having i guess she's having like a pop-up shop type situation where she's gonna you know extend her discount to her friends or whatever and um so she's figuring out her outfit that she was gonna wear so it's her and bambi and of course she's telling bambi what happened in court and how carly wasn't there for her as a friend and then somehow they get on the conversation about light-skinned keisha um oh i know why because she said she invited tokyo to come to the party but tokyo was gonna be doing an event or in the studio with light-skinned keisha and of course bambi was like who light-skinned who yeah i don't fuck with her and of course, you know, Sierra was like, why, girl, what's wrong? And she said, well, and then she reiterated the story that basically I'm all about girl code and light-skinned Keisha messed with my homegirl man while her and him was still together. And so I don't really fuck with her. I ain't got no respect for that. Okay. So that's pretty much all that went down. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we get to the bobbles party, the broom, the, the bobbles and broomsticks and whatever. And, of course, Carly shows up. So, Carly is talking to Rashida um, and explaining to Rashida what happened with court. She said, you know, I've been trying to call Sierra. Sierra ain't returned none of my phone calls. So, you know, it is what it is. But I was there, and I am going to be there for her at court. Because, you know, Rashida was like, girl, why you wasn't there? Why you ain't show up at court? And, you know, Carly was like, I was there. Okay, I was at the wrong courthouse. But she got a continuance. I'll be there next time. I'll be there when she need me. So... While they're talking, Sierra comes over there, confronts Carly, and of course they get into an altercation. I mean, they get into an argument, and Carly is like, "What are you talking about? Like, I know your case got continued. I'm going to be there for you, but I mean, I wish you could have been there for me. Like, I need, like, you need me. And don't make this about you, Carly. This is about me. Everything ain't about you." And Carly was like, "I'm not saying it's about me. All I'm saying is, you want me to be a good friend to you, but you ain't been a good friend to me this year with everything I've been going through." She's like, she's like, you know what, Carly? I love you enough not to whip your ass because I already got one case. I don't need another case. And Carly was like, mm, okay, well, keep that same energy when you need me to testify for you. And then here go Rashida. That ain't cool that she going to threaten her but not testify. Like, I understand you mad, but that ain't cool. All the while this is going on, Sierra's lawyer is across the room talking about something. So this, this y'all world? This how y'all? This what y'all do? Here's my problem, Sierra. 
This whole thing is because you are upset with Carly and with Briscoe because they won't testify on your behalf because they know you're innocent and you didn't do nothing wrong. Yet, you threatened to whoop Carly's ass and then you mush her, put her hand, put your hand on her, which means technically you have now assaulted Carly. See, that is not a way to convince somebody that you are innocent is by assaulting him, somebody else. Like, you're not going to convince me that you're innocent by assaulting somebody. Like, that's not, that's not how that works. Anyway, y'all, that's where we left off. That was this episode. If I forgot anything, I'm sorry. We already 20 minutes in, child. Let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments. Peace.